Oh, I'm live? Yeah. Oh, hey. Hey, y'all. I'm, <laughs> I'm James Wright, and welcome to my shop. And my wife and I have communications problems. <laughs> I have communications problems. <laughs> so we are going to be having a good bit of fun tonight, uh, finishing up the box. We're going to be doing some carving on here. We're going to be doing all the smoothing work that needs to be done, getting all the details to make this into a final box. And I'm going to be showing... The, uh, if we have time, I might put on the first coat of uh, finish on it. We'll be talking about that later. So it should be a fun uh, time altogether. Um, now for the next live, I'm actually thinking about possibly doing a collaboration uh, with uh, Octane Monkey. He's in the chat. Yeah, he's in the chat right now. Um, he has a, a auto uh, channel, and I'm thinking about making um, some emblems for him and doing those live. So. Uh, I don't know. We'll see how that goes. Um, so that's something the two of us are thinking about. So stay tuned for that. If you are live, go ahead and throw your comments in the live chat. And my wife will uh, try and keep track of them so that we can. She will keep track of them because she's an amazing person. Do or do not. <laughs> <laughs> if you are watching this recorded, uh, then go down in the description below. And I have all of the questions that have been asked with timestamps beside them. So you can jump to roughly where it is in the video. So I hope that helps some of you. Um, oh, yes, we've got lots of things coming up. We had the meet just this last weekend here in Loves Park. That was a lot of fun. Um, this Saturday, I'm going up to La Crosse, Wisconsin to do a turning demonstration at the... Yes, we're both going up now. We, we found a babysitter. Um, so we'll be doing a turning demonstration up there with the spring pole lathe. So if you are in the, uh, I believe it's the La Crosse Area Turner Club. Uh, I can't remember the name of the club. We'll be doing that. Yeah. Um, let's see, May, we're going to Makers Central in London. So my wife and I will be flying out there. It'll be fun. It's coming up in just uh, what? Less, than. less than three weeks, two and a half weeks. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, then coming in June, we are going to be at the National Midwest Tool Collectors Meet uh, in uh, Peoria, Illinois. So if you're coming out for that, I'm looking forward to seeing you. There are people literally traveling from all over the world to come to this meet. It is the largest hand tool sale in the world. Um, so definitely take a look at that. Uh, missing anything before we dive in? I don't think so. So we have a flower box that will be hanging on a building or such. And uh, we have done dovetails. We have an inset bottom with a panel on here. And last week we glued it all up. And this week we're going to clean up the glue and then we're going to do the carving. I here did most of it because most of this is just tap, 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 and it's really bad for audio. So we're going to do a little bit and show you what we do <laughs> um, and possibly get to the, the finish on here. So the first thing is we pulled out our clamps and we need to do the smooth up on it. And I like to just stick it in my vise and get ready to do the cleanup. Let me move this camera. And any questions while I'm getting this set up? Oh, well, that's a good thing to talk about. Back this up a little bit. There we go. And switch over to the camera. So what we have here, um, the dovetails coming out. We have glue up here. And all of my dovetails are just a hair proud. Uh, what, uh, 64th of an inch or less. Um, and I need to take this label off because we don't need to plane that. And I'm going to grab my smoothing plane. And I have this set up with a fairly fine mouth. Um, nice clean shaving. The chip breaker is close to the tip. It's set up really, really fine. So it's, it's a smoothing plane and it's set up for that. And we're going to be coming in from the end grain. I don't want to go out the end of the board. So I don't want to plane out this way. I want to plane onto the board. And the reason being is you have all the end grain on these dovetails sticking up. And that end grain, um, if I come off this way, I'm going to be snapping it off. Whereas if I push it this way, I'm pushing it into other end grain and I'm going to be keeping it nice and clean. Is that out of focus? Here. Trying to get this whole board in the shot. So I'll be working at this end and that end. Um, so we're just going to go down until I get close to the end. When I do the other end, I'll zoom in a little closer. And right now I'm just hitting the end grain. Now if I have a lot of end grain sticking up, I might grab my low angle plane and just get through that end grain because this hits the, the end grain a little bit better then the high angle smoother. There, get it down close to smooth. I don't want to use this because in this case, at this end, I'm actually planing into the grain. I'm planing the wrong direction. So if I use a low angle plane, I'm going to be getting a lot of tear out on this. 
But with a smoother that's set up really nice, I'm not going to be getting as much tear out. So now we have that done. What's that? Is my mic this one over here? Yes. Um, you may need to move the mic closer to your mouth. Oh, it should be up past the arrow. Yeah. Sorry. How's that? So now we're smoothing out, and I'm going to smooth halfway onto the board, and making sure I get a nice clean shaving all the way across. Just like that. That's smooth, and we're nice and smooth here. A blind person couldn't tell that there's a gap there. Now I want to move around to this end and give you a little closer up, as long as I can get the camera to move. Oh, cable's in the way. Oh, where are we at? Right here. Let's actually zoom in on this a little bit more. I'll go that way with it. Oh, to have another cameraman. When the kids are a little older, maybe. I want to show you what this looks like close up. <laughs> what, you think I'm I... just imagining them having a camera. So this one's a little high, so I'm going to use the low angle plane here. And you can see those beautiful shavings inside there. I love ingrain shavings. And then we can bring in this one. Now I guess it was this end I'd be planning against the ingrain. The other end is okay. You can see now you don't see any of the glue left. I'm trying to keep my arm out of the way. I'm just getting rid of the glue on the end. You can see a little bit of glue right here. Take another pass or two until that disappears. And because I'm planning against the grain here, I'm going to go on to about there. And then I'm going to turn around and come back the other way and plane out so that I don't get any shavings, but I don't want to shoot out the end of the plane, out at the end of the board. Turn that back. Focus. And now I'm going to come back here. And I'm just going to smooth it out, but right here I'm going to lift up so I don't go out the end of the board. I'm just getting rid of any tear out here because this is planing the right direction. And so there we have a really nice smooth edge all the way around. But now we just need to do this end. I've done two of the sides already, so now we can just do this end. Let me switch this back to one. I moved this over. So Alan wants me to ask if you would finish with your card scraper. Um, yes, yes, I'm going to be doing that. I'm not doing all the finished detail until after carving because um, the carving will have a lot of um, impact on the wood. And I always clean off the pattern of the carving with a card scraper, which I may end up having to sharpen my card scraper. So maybe we'll add that into the video. So I'm pretty sure mine's dull right now. At least I don't think I have a good edge on it right now. There, blue sticker out of the way. So let's move this back and put that back on there. There we go. Now we can plane out this side. And on this one, I'm gonna have to hit it with the low angle over here first, because this side is weird. So I'm gonna actually plane towards myself. I'm gonna turn my Western planes into eastern planes and pull them. Yes, you can pull a push plane and you can push a pull plane. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay, good and clean there. Oop. So the grain is definitely going this way. So starting here, I'm running against the grain. I'm just going until all those glue lines disappear. Wow, that grain is really sticking up high. The, it's, it's a, yeah, you can see on the side, all the lines are running out pretty quickly, so I'm getting a lot of tear out here. This plane is a little bit deep, steeper of a set than I normally would uh, for final smoothing. But we'll be doing the final smoothing of the card scraper today, so no problem. And then again, because I had that little bit of tear out on the other side, I'm going to go across this way and lift out before getting into the end grain of those pins. Or, yeah. There we go. That's nice and clean. Now, I like chamfering these corners, 
But the problem is, no matter how you run this across, you're going to be blowing out fibers. So I just keep it at 45 degrees, and I get it close. And then all these little chip outs here, when I come back with a chisel, or actually, no, on this one, I'm going to be chamfering this edge. So I'll be able to get rid of those chip outs this way. There we go. And then we can just chamfer all the edges. But then the big question is, how do we chamfer the inside edges? Oh, I got to roll up my sleeve. I'm getting hot in here. So everybody knows I'm hot. <laughs> Any questions? On that note, cut twice asked, will there be drainage holes in the bottom? Um, you can put drainage holes in there and just put like a rock on top of them so that it doesn't completely uh, dump out the dirt. Uh, however, because this has a loose bottom in a groove, the water can drain out through that gap. So I don't need to put drainage holes on here. Um, I could, nothing wrong with that. But uh, the gap, due to the way I made it, it's not a, it's not a glued and tight fit so the water can still get out around it. But that's a very good question, because I was actually thinking that when I was beginning. Maybe I should put drainage holes in this, because growing up when I made flower boxes, we always put drainage holes in them. But all of those had a sealed, glued, tight bottom. And uh, I'm not doing that here. Any other questions? I can never get you to roll your sleeves like that any other time. That's how I always roll them. No, but you look nice with them. I'm trying to get you to do that with your dress shirts. Okay. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Octane Monkey goes. Sandpaper? Question mark? No. No sandpaper. Not yeah. on this. Okay, now we're going to chamfer all these edges. Um, oh, wait. No, no, no. Before we do that, um, because I lined up everything with the bottom, there are slight edges on the top rim of this. And to show you what I'm talking about, right here, uh, because I lined up with the bottom all the way around, there's an edge right here, and an edge right here, and an edge right here, and an edge right here. So I need to get rid of those. So the nice thing is I can just grab a smoothing plane and plane all the way around this thing until I get a nice clean edge. And then, wow, that was actually down a ways. And then we can actually go all the way around this board like that, once we get these all down to depth. And it doesn't matter that this top edge isn't perfectly smooth. There's nothing around it that says it has to be perfectly smooth. No flower is going to make any difference if it is or not. And hopefully soon they'll be covered in greenery. Here's that one. And I think I have one more here. So you're planting plants in the carcass of one of its relatives? Yeah. Now you got it. <laughs> Any other questions? No. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing what Octane Monkey does because he has a uh, making emblems for a BMW that have his logo on them. So we'll see if we do that in the live. If that's something you guys want to see, it's going to do a lot of carving work. Um, with a little bit of epoxy fill, I'm guessing making little uh, like three inch diameter um, emblems with his logo on them. All right, we've got that done. Now, because we have end grain sticking out here, I don't want to plane this way, otherwise I'm blowing those fibers out. So I want to come this way, and I'll plane halfway across, and this way halfway across. And I'm just visually making sure that chamfer's the right amount all the way across. Just like that, we have chamfered edges, chamfered. Now, if I really wanted to, I could do the inside of this box, but it's soon going to be filled with dirt. So I don't know if there's any particular reason that I have to chamfer the inside. Um, but to do that, I grab um, my chisel plane. Where did my chisel plane go? Oh, that's right. I moved. Never mind. I can't use that now. So I'm just going to grab this, and I will chamfer the inside with a block plane and just stop like that. Then I'll get this close and then I'm going to come in with this and I'm just going to ride the bevel 
and slide along here and chamfer the edge. Ride the bevel and chamfer the edge. And then you can just do the same thing here. Oops, except for there, I'm running into the end of the grain. So I'm going to go the opposite direction. Whip my end shot. Move up a little bit. Come back in this side. And that's how you chamfer inside corners. Sounds really daunting because you are basically carving, but as long as you ride the bevel and not take too heavy of a cut, it is surprisingly easy and a lot of fun. Um, but I'm not going to do the rest of it because there's no reason to chamfer the inside. I'm going to be filling this with dirt in a little bit. Um, so what do we have here? We have smooth sides. We have chamfer corners. Um, I need to chamfer these corners still. And then we can get to the carving. Any questions while I'm doing this? No. Did I chamfer this one already? Oh, I did chamfer them already. I'm better than I thought it was. So let's do some carving. No questions? <gasps> Come on, people! What's the average annual rainfall of the Amazon Basin? <laughs> oh, I didn't count bibs. <laughs> I can do that. Well, maybe. Uh, just, you have to be careful. Some of them are double deep. <laughs> okay. I have a master's degree in nursing, but I can't count bibs carefully. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Seriously, dude. <laughs> um... <laughs> I'll count while you carve. So let's talk about the pattern I have on this. Um, so what I do for getting patterns is I literally go onto Google Images and um, I, I type in Celtic weave and I Celtic weave patterns and I'll find one that I like and I print it off and I glue it down here and I just use the kids um, glue stick, do it on the paper, then do it on the wood and stick it down and it holds it nicely in place. And a lot of people are like, oh no, but then you've got the glue on the wood, but that's fine. I still haven't smoothed the surface. So once I have that out, I'm going to do my final smoothing and detail it, and then no problem. Um, and anything that is below the surface, I've carved out already, and the glue is gone because it comes out in the chips. Um, and so that's what I like to do. Other people have other ways of putting down masking tape and then gluing the masking tape, or doing a transfer paper, or things of that nature. And there's a, a whole pile of different ideas. This is just the one that I like to use. <coughs> Oops, excuse me. Right into the microphone. Sorry about that. Um, let me move this over, though. Get you, woo, that way. A little better image of what we're doing here. There we go. So, let's look at the carving that we have going on. I've done most of it. Um, it probably took me about uh, 20 minutes of work to do this total. So, all told, with putting the, the applique down, this is about 25 minutes worth of work. And it, it looks detailed to a lot of people. But if you look at this really closely, let me zoom in a little bit and show you some of this. Um, especially with focusing down these lines. You can see these lines aren't straight. They, they wind all over the place. And unless you're really looking for it, or you're the person carving it, this looks absolutely perfect. But once you start looking at it, you start seeing all these little imperfections and the way things weave. And that just makes it handmade. Um, this, you know that this was not done on a CNC. And I love those little imperfections, the way lines curve and the way different things just aren't perfect. That's just, that's very happy for me. Um, and so don't worry about perfection. Uh, most people, when they get into carving, they really worry about perfection. And uh, that's going to kill more people than anything else, or kill more woodworking carving than anything else. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's talk about the tools. Uh, this is a V-tool from Two Cherries, and I have a link to the exact ones I have. This is a, uh, a 39.6, um, and I have a link to the exact ones on my website, so if you want to see that. But if you're going to get into carving, a V-tool, you can do a ton of carving with just a V-tool. The things like this that are just line carvings, this is all you need. Um, you know, if you really want to get into more, I do have you know an entire roll over here of other chisels that I use, uh, but this one I use far more than anything else in the entire roll over there. Um, so Am you can I pick one of these yet? up for... I'm always thirsty, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> you can pick one of these up for like 35, 40 bucks. Um, actually, you can get the, uh, the file, um, the Swiss made, the, the medium size handle. You can pick one of these up for about 30 bucks with the, the V-tool head. I've used, I've, this is the first one that I got, and it is very... Um, uh, very nice. I, I use it all the time. This is a slightly smaller 
um, opening so I can do a lot more of my detail work. Whereas in this one I'm doing fairly large grooves, so I don't need the detail work, so I'm pulling out my largest one. Um, yeah, so the, the things you want to think about when carving this is you start at a high angle. See, I'm holding this up. And then as you go in, you flatten out. And your angle determines how deep you're cutting because you're actually riding along the bottom edge of this bevel. Let me zoom in a little bit more and show you that. So you're actually riding right along that bottom edge of the bevel there. So as that sits on the wood, that's sliding forward. And if that bevel is parallel with the wood, you're going to be running in a straight line. If you lift it up higher, then you're diving down farther into the wood. Lifting it lower, and you're bubbling out. You don't have your little... Oh, I didn't put the lights up in! Sorry, Alan. You Ooh. are slacking. Alan gets a joke. Thank you, Alan. And this is everyone's least favorite part of the show, so let's do this one. Um, oh, I've got to hear... i got to say one that I heard today. They, uh, the firefighters in, in Paris really do not know what caused the fire. But from what I understand, Quasimodo, he has a hunch. Oh. Really? <laughs> I thought it was pretty good. <laughs> That's why I said it's everyone's least favorite part of the movie, of the show. The movie? Oh, <laughs> yeah. They if they paid two hours to watch you, well, I guess they do, but no. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Alan. Okay, let's get back to the carving. Um, yes. <laughs> I heard that one today, and I like it. Um, okay, so we have a little bit of carving here to do. Now, you can do this by hand, but the problem is, eventually, if you're going in, you're going to get a catch. And you're pushing and you're pushing and you're pushing and suddenly it lets loose and you, and you slide all the way past. Yes, right. And you get this gro groove running out. Um, and that, uh, that, that, that's a, a bad thing. So the, when you're just doing it by hand, you want to make sure you're just taking off a light pass with a small curl. And then you come back and you take a little heavier pass. Make it a little deeper and then you make it a little deeper. And each time you're only doing enough so that light pressure and controllable pressure takes it down to depth. Um, that takes a little bit more time, and so the way I like to do it is just grab a small mallet. This is one I turned, I actually have a, a video on it. Um, I have this little, uh, I think it's a like six ounce um, brass mallet. This one I use for a little bit more of my detail work. This is a little bit larger groove, so I grab my bigger one here. And just gonna be tap, 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 tap. And just like that, you've got a groove running across. And as you can see, I'm gonna set it in here. I'm gonna start up high, I'm getting into that groove, and I'll move the image down in a minute. But I'm going to set it up high until I get down to depth. And then I'm going to bring it down into the cutting angle that I want. And I'm going to slide on that bevel and run around this. And there went a little bit light, a little bit heavier. In this case, I'm just going to go around just like that. And I get this nice swooping feel. Um, here, let me zoom in and show this a little more actually showing it diving in there's all the way in and so you can see i'm gonna start it up high <laughs> and once i get down to depth i'm gonna bring the angle down and then just slide along and this really seems scary to a lot of people but most people with about five minutes of practice can do this pattern without any problem just about five so minutes of practice. So that means that Sarah should come over there and do it. Yeah, if you want to. You want to? All right, swap. Okay. I knew this would happen. I wore my PJ pants and I... <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I don't want to get my... Oh, jeez. Sorry. Sorry. Camera's away. Okay, hang on. Oh, I didn't bring my stool. Oh, yes. So this is, this is like working up here for her. <laughs> okay, what do you got left? Okay, um, here, why don't you oh, come over this way? Oh, the chat's going to go wild. No oh, no, that, one, that one's going to be hard because I'm right next to the edge. So why don't you start uh, here? Okay. So, there, and there. So this isn't your, no, hold it. Like, I know I can't see. Oh, it's sorry. literally my problem. Can you get my stool for me, please? Yes, I'll get the stool for you. And if you want to see the video, I made a video on making this stool. There you go. Oh, I can see now. <laughs> okay, hang on. Yeah, 
went deeper like that, right? right? Like that? Yep, like that now. Hold it. Whoa. Here, let me show you before. Whoa. Oops, sorry. Just let me move this camera here. What in the world is it doing? My camera just stopped. Okay, let's go back to one. I broke it. <laughs> to turn this one off and turn it back on. All right, um, well, what you want to do is you want to actually hold the chisel in your grip halfway down. Rather than just up on the handle or just down on the tip, the more the closer you get to the tip, the more control you have. The farther back here, the more force you have. So halfway in between is right about the balance you want. Is it wrong that I want to put my pinky under there? No. Okay, so you want me to go over, or do you want to? Okay, hang on, come back here. You're just saying, let me move this. Okay. So yeah, start here and go around this. Oh, way. I can see. I totally was going to start in the wrong spot. Is that that's not deep enough? That's fine. It's better to not go deep enough than to go too deep because you always come back and make it deeper. Ooh, that's fine. Yeah, you will see, you'll see going off the line a little ways. I, I do that all the time. That's perfectly normal because once these lines disappear, you won't be able to tell that you went Hang off on. the line. Hang on. Oh, that's... I'm stuck on the stool is my problem. Yes. So she has to carve in one spot. And I left, it's all at the curly cues. I didn't leave any straights here for you. Now, do you want me to go straight through? Or that stop there? It follows all the way around. Okay. Well, I just or you can come to like here and then move the stool and then go this way. Just tell me if I'm getting way off this game. And to give people an idea, I actually taught my daughter to do this uh, this summer. She's eight and does this. So it's, so it's first, not that difficult. Follow, follow that now why don't you move the stool around here then? Okay, hang on. <laughs> Here, because then you can, here. Oh, you got me. Then you can go like this. Gotcha. Now, when you're using a mallet, a mallet gives you far more control. It allows you to actually detail what you're doing. And Woo! so, in going towards yourself, you're not going to slip. As if you're doing it hand, um, handheld. Um, you know. Now, because I have the camera, I would actually move around and, and being followed with it, so I'm never actually going towards myself. Um, because it's easier to move around than it is to move my body that way. You're also not stuck on the stool. Yes. And she's stuck in one little spot. My own little corner in my own little chair. There. Nice little curl. See, anyone can do it. Even my wife. Uh-oh, she's got something sharp. <laughs> but here, I want to show you some uh, strop work before we move on because this is, this is an important thing to carving. Is um, Most of the time when people... Um, when people start working with chisels and things, uh, they tend to let tools get too dull before they go back to sharpening. And now you get to see all the chat they were talking behind your back. I know, I was going to say. Uh, so I always keep a strop on the bench that I can pull out and clean up a tool quickly. So for a V-tool like this, I'm going to run it on one bevel, and then I'm going to roll it up, and I'm, I'm working on the bottom because the bottom isn't sharp. It's actually rounded, and that's one thing that people on, on miss on V-tools. Oh, it was like out that. of focus. Oh. Yes, I had my hoodie. And then like that. And then I do the inside, which is the edge of it, and some compound on the other side. I'm so sorry. And so every five, six minutes or so of working, I'm going to stop, strop it, and go back to work. And then we can very easily... Go back into this. <laughs> what questions we got? Are you still reading through? I, there really aren't any, except there was a question earlier, I think, from... Hang on. Was it... DD Driller asks, what flowers are you putting in there? Um, I probably won't put flowers. I think I'm going to do a uh, um, um, the seasoning garden. Uh, what do you call those? Herbs. Herb garden. There's the word. Um, yeah. So, oh, I missed one. <laughs> there's, there's always one line you miss. Um, next week, I, if we do that collab, uh, we'll be doing a lot of other carving. 
Um, otherwise, we might be doing something different if we decide not to do the collab. But we'll be doing some different carving with a V-tool, with uh, um, a couple different gouges and other things like that, and actually doing a little bit of relief carving. Um, so I'm looking forward to messing with that. Let me make sure I didn't get any lines. I didn't miss any. Cool. Okay, we're good to move on. So now the question is, how do we get this pattern off of here? How are we doing in time? Oh, 30. Cool. And I actually just take a card scraper, and you can actually buy these on my website. Sharpen your card scraper first. Uh, I want to see if I got the edges on. And for this, I don't really need it sharp. So are you not doing the outline, the big black outline? You're just doing the little No, no, I'm parts. just doing the middle. And I, did, I was going to do a pattern that went all the way across, and I thought, no, I just kind of like it being in the middle. So we'll see how that comes out. I always like experimenting and playing with new things. Never. Right, babe? Huh? <laughs> so then I just take the card scraper and scrape this off. And usually this is how I'm going to finish it rather than doing sandpaper. And so why not just do the first step and start the scraping? And it's a good way to make sure you've scraped everywhere. Make sure you get rid of all those little pieces. This side's actually sharp. It might still show sharpening. I was going to say, I think you're disappointed because then... What's that? I thought you built it for Sarah, so she didn't she decide... He says he builds things for me. But we all know. I build them for her, but not really. Everything you have made, except for a few little things. <laughs> Is he going to darken the lines he carved? Here we go. Got rid of almost all the white. A little bit of scraps here in the middle. There we go. So now we can do the smoothing on here, but let me show you um, some sharpening. That seems to be something people want to watch. I'm thinking I might do a, uh, a card scraper sharpening video here soon. You haven't done one? I've done a whole bunch of them. Oh, I was But it's, there's, it's one of those things that's always good to update every now and then because it's a commonly asked for thing. I think I've done like four or five different sharpening videos for card scrapers. Now, um, the only important thing is that your burnisher needs to be harder steel than your card scraper. Uh, so if you have an old uh, knife steel, those work really well. Um, I use a car carbide rod, so this is a uh, um, tungsten carbide rod. So it's much, much harder, which makes it a little bit easier and faster to sharpen. Um, and so I want to start with a nice clean edge if I'm just getting started. So I'll usually take it over to the stones and I'll flatten it and I'll flatten it and I'll flatten it and get a nice sharp, square, rectangular edge on there. Once I have that, then I can bring over the burnisher. And basically what I want to do is pillow this over on both sides. So I'm going to grab the burnisher and run it down. Here, let me move this camera over here and show you this a little closer. Focus. There we go, focused. Two. So I'm going to grab the burnisher here. I'm going to put the corner into the bench. And I'm just going to keep this perpendicular to the plate. A dozen or so strokes. And at this point, I can already feel a mushroom coming over the side. I can feel this burn, uh, this um, curl coming out. But right now, it's coming straight out. So what I want to do is take this, and rather than keeping it 90 degrees, I'm going to put like 5 degree angle on it. And I'm going to pull it across. So I'm going to be pulling it this way as well as moving it that way. So I start up here. Turn this around. Same thing again. And I've got a nice curl on there. So now, move that around to this side. <laughs> I'm getting curls that come up on here. Move this side. As opposed to just sawdust, you get all these micro curls. And that edge is actually a little small. I might uh, detail that one a bit more. Oh, sorry. Move over this way. There we go. That side's a little better. 
All right, while you're doing that, can you answer a question for me? Sure. So I'm getting a couple different questions as to where to find hand tools. One was in Quebec, one in Florida. So you want to tell them about your website? Yeah, Florida is a hard place to find hand tools. Um, but I have a website dedicated to that called handtoolfinder.com. Um, so yes, definitely take a look at handtoolfinder.com. It's on my website and is a list of every place I know of to buy tools. Um, not just locally, I have a map of every place in the world I know of to buy hand tools, um, as well as online dealers who sell antique hand tools that I trust. Um, so definitely worth taking a look there. Far better than eBay. <laughs> there. And once you've gotten used to using a card scraper and doing your finishing with that, uh, it is amazing how smooth these surfaces get and how finish ready they are. Move over to this too. So sometimes I'll push and sometimes I'll pull. You're just a drag. <sighs> that was pretty good, babe. <laughs> I have Next time you can come up here and tell. <laughs> but then they're not a dad joke. And yes, you can even use a card scraper on ingrain. So there, that is done. We are ready for finish. So let's actually look at the finish we're gonna be putting on this thing. And I'm gonna be using. Surprise. Total Boat. Oh. Something different. Um, and this is actually a marine varnish. This is a varnish that is intended to cover teak and things like that um, on decks on a boat. So it's intended to be in the water. So because this is going outside, I want to actually protect the wood. And boil linseed oil is not a good exterior finish. It can wash out. As with any oil, it can be washed out of the wood. Um, and so I like to actually use something that's intended to be outside, which in this case is actually a varnish. So, oh shoot, I didn't bring those out. Let me do this. Bring it out. Any questions? I just gotta get this ready to, to do. And put a coat on here. And so I like this stuff because it is intended to get wet. It's one of those finishes that is really foolproof. And the nice thing about this particular one is you can put another coat on an hour later. And so you can build up four or five coats without having to sand in between them. It comes in this bag so you can squeeze it out. It's really just kind of a nice thing. So let me get this. Do you have any questions while I'm setting this up? Oh, uh, let's see. What is the, oh, let's do the, uh, the giveaway. Um, how many bibs were there? 55. 55. Oh, shoot, I didn't look at the names. I was going to say, how are you going to know if you didn't know what the number was? That's a good question, babe. Oh. But the duh. Yes. So I'm going to look back and see who got closest to 55 on last week's post. Um, first. Who got there first? Yes. Who got there closest first? So don't try to put it on there now. Well, I guess you could if no one else guessed it. What's that? I said they could go back and put it on if no one else guessed it. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're time stamped. Well, um, if no one else put it on before them, <laughs> that's your fault, not no, theirs. I get to whoever's closest at the time. Um, I gotta grab these. So for next week, we're gonna be giving away a card scraper, and just getting my triangles here. And we are going to be guessing how many. Okay, this is an interesting one. If you watched the scroll saw video, in other words, my last video where I made the belt for it. How long is the leather belt on the scroll saw? How many inches long is the belt? So uh, don't put that in. Don't don't put that in the live now. Wait until this video goes out, um, and once it becomes an actual video, then you can comment below and guess how many inches long the belt is on the scroll saw. Which kind of surprised me, because <laughs> it's not actually pi because it's not round. It goes out to a smaller pulley. And so it's bigger than that, but it's not as much bigger. And it's kind of in those comments. So, yes, um, I will be notifying whoever won last week's. Um, as soon as we're off here, we'll get onto that. So let's get some varnish on there. And then this, I have a bucket here I can seal it up. 
because I can re-coat this every hour. So if I seal it up, then I can make sure that I can reuse this. So I'm just gonna put a little bit in here. Comes out milky white, but dries perfectly clear. And I wanna put this on the bottom first so that I can then flip it over and put it on top of these triangles. I'm just gonna use a brush to apply it. And this goes on really nice and thick, but you can thin it out and spread it around. Show this then. Hey, that's a good shot actually. Uh oh, where's the closer? There it is. Cool. And so we're gonna cover the bottom in this. And I really like this stuff because even though I'm putting it on with an aggressive brush, um, you really do not see it when it's done. It's a nice, clean surface, and it's a good, it's, it is a gloss finish, as all, uh, almost all marine varnishes are. Um, Epiphanes does make a, uh, um, a deglosser you can put on. What are you hooing about? Well, one, varnish, and two, I was laughing because it's an aggressive brush, like it's gonna attack you or something. Pretty much. <laughs> It's not like a really fine brush. It's more like a pig's hair brush. And there's my, my theater background coming out where we talk about different paint brushes. Okay, there's that side. So I can put out four. I want to know if you're not using BLO because of the Notre Dame fire. <laughs> no, um, I'm not using BLO what because it's What happened to that triangle? What triangle? This the one? one looks like it caught fire. Yeah, it probably did. Uh, <laughs> one of the BLO accidents. We can set it on those. Make sure it doesn't tip over. And now, ooh, let me turn around so you can see the card. It's going to attack. That's what I was thinking. It's going to get attacked. <laughs> it's aggressive. And so you just want to be careful when putting it into the carving because you're scraping it off the brush. You want to make sure that you're not loading up those and so I just oh, come back and step on that was one of the questions I was trying to go back and find. Someone asked if you were going to darken the carving so I guess the nope. answer is no. Um, uh -huh. Now if I really wanted to I could go back through with a regular chisel and relief everything in between the lines and that actually looks really nice but I didn't have the time in the video tonight to do that. But in the carving I'm just going to rub it in and then I'm going to come back and stipple it out making sure I don't get anything stuck in there because if you do then you'll get these runs when that extra comes out just like that and then i'll just keep an eye on that as i'm finishing this up and by the time i'm done that'll be good to go Ooh, let's watch these dovetails develop here's the fun part now one of the downsides to this is that i'm not going to get the full color of blo and in the past if i really wanted to um, I would put BLO on there first and then do it in this, which I guess I could have. Um, but it's going to be outside and so that the sunlight is going to darken this wood very, very quickly. So there really isn't that much need for BLO on there. Look, the dove dovetails come to life. You're missing part of the corner. What's that? You missed a spot in the corner. I did? Mm-hmm. Where? Out that way. There? there you go. Yes, thank you. Oh. And you do want to finish it all the way around on the inside and the outside. Um, otherwise, it's going to distort because one side absorbs water faster than the other, which makes the boards warp. Um, you want it to be equal all the way around, so you're getting an equal amount of absorption all the way around. So while I do this, any questions now? Uh, let's see. Carrie Kitson asked, will that seal the joint you were going to use to let the water out of? No, it is not that thick. And if I really did want to put holes in the bottom, um, I would just drill, um, I would drill a couple, well, depending upon how, I'd probably put like six half inch holes. And then I would find a rock that fits the hole um, loosely. It doesn't like fall down into the hole, it covers the hole. And I'd set that on there and then put dirt to hold it in place. And that rock will allow water to run around the rock and down into the hole. Um, at least that's the way I've done it in the past. I'm sure there's other ways, but you just want to make sure that the hole doesn't let the dirt out. Otherwise, then you have a mess, and all your plants are like, where'd my dirt go? 
They say it just like that. They do. They say it just like that. Oh, I love this part where the finish comes out, and I'm getting excited here. Why do the triangles have holes? Why do the triangles have holes? Your little triangle thingies. Because they did. Makes them weight saving. It's part of the Deathly Hollow? No. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, maybe there's some like thing you could put rods through to keep them at angle. I don't know. Because when someone wanted to make it, they decided to put holes on them. Cheaper? I don't know. What else we got? Octane Monkey wants to know how long you've been doing woodworking. I have been woodworking since I was five years old. So... That would be 30. 30 years now. You know, that's hard math. Yep. Um, <laughs> hand tools is a recent thing. I've only been doing it for the last four years or so. Um, and before that, it was just all power tools. But then we moved, and uh, um, the rest is history. <laughs> I sold most of my tools because our house became too small for them, and I became a stay-at-home dad. Now, for this brush, um, I use one brush for a full job, and so I'm going to get a Ziploc bag and seal up the end of this in that Ziploc bag, and it will be good for the rest of the coats. But unless I went out and got some thinner, I could clean it off with a thinner. Um, I just normally dedicate one brush to the use so that when it's done, it's done. And then I'm just going to go around and make sure there aren't any drips, make sure that anything isn't sticking out or there isn't a um, holiday anywhere on there. And then let it sit for an hour and I can come back an hour later and put another coat on it. And I'm probably going to put about three coats on this. I could probably get away with just one because it's not like it's a, a really delicate piece of fine furniture. It's a, you know, I'm going to be putting plants in this thing. So <laughs> there really isn't a huge reason to, to make it really nice and shiny. But the nice thing about this finish is you don't have to sand it out as long as you don't put it on too heavy. So I'm just going to come back on this side, make sure there aren't any drips in the grooves, make sure I hit every spot. And it should be about ready to go. So there, we've watched this whole thing from beginning to end live. This has been a fun, fun journey for me. Uh, if you'd like to see more projects like this where we do it completely live, let me know. And maybe if someone gives me a good idea, we'll do that. Um, so next week, we're either going to be doing the, uh, the live video with Octane Monkey or uh, we'll be doing a QA. and a I haven't decided which yet and I'll probably be talking to him to figure out uh, how I want to do that or if we're just going to do a regular video with that. So that should be a lot of fun. Cool. There we have it. Do a quick walk around of this unless there's any questions. Um, let's say... La, 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 la. Where did it go? I like that look. It's very nice. Oh, you got like a little... um. Do you want those globbies? That's my very tactile. Yeah, there's, it looks like there's a few globs inside the carving. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, come, come my angle. Do you see them? No, I've got a few holidays I need to fill in, but I don't see any globs. Just a couple places where the finish didn't work all the way down to the bottom. All right. Oh, um, I'm not going to say this right. F. Mustafa? says, I have a clog problem with my hand planes. Please advise. Ah, hand plane clogs. They're my favorite. That's why I wear wooden shoes, so that my clogs are on my feet and not in my hand plane. I thought that was Have good. you been waiting to use that? <laughs> like, seriously, rehearsing it? I've thought about sometime putting my shoes in the toilet. What? So I could clog the toilet. Clean um, it first if you're going to do that. Usually, the biggest problem with clogs in a hand plane is that the chip breaker is not fitted well to the iron. Um, and so, what you're going to have, if if the chip breaker is on the iron, you should be able to sl you shouldn't be able to grab the tip of the chip breaker. Your finger should slide right over it. Um, and so, what happens is the edge of the tip chip breaker is either cupped so it's not touching the iron in the middle, or there's a bit of a bubble so that there's a ridge on it. And it's a really a hard thing for me to describe without showing you one in reality. And thankfully, I have a video on that. 
Um, so if you search for wood by right chip breaker problems or I don't remember what I named the video. I think how to fix a chip breaker is how the video was named. Um, you'll come across that and it is one of my more commonly watched videos is other people have the same problem. Chip breaker is the most common problem. Sometimes the mouth is too tight for the shaving you're trying to put through it. So you're trying to put a big shaving through a small mouth and that'll clog it up. Um, if you're on a wooden hand plane, um, sometimes the wedge will cause a problem as the, the edge of the wedge is sticking up a little bit too much. Or sometimes there's a chip of wood sticking out from one side or the other that's causing issue. But most of the time, um, it's the chip breaker that does not fit well to the iron. So play with that. Go check out the video and it has a, a bunch of different tips of different things you can do with that. So yeah, hope that helps. How about, one more question, Ibn Hashim asks, ever rub or fill the cuts with a darker color? Any suggestions for doing so? Um, yeah, actually I, I've done um, things like that. What you actually do is get a stain. Um, if you get, especially like an oil stain, um, an oil-based stain, not a water-based stain because a water-based stain actually penetrates a little bit deeper. Um, a water-based stain um, and you stain the whole thing and then you come with a plane and you plane off the surface that's been stained on the top and all the ridges inside are still stained that darker color. Really makes it pop. Um, I've done that quite a few times, especially when you do the relief carving. So everything in between all of the lines, I'll take that down a step deeper and then I will darken that area. Um, the other thing I've done in the past is I've filled everything with epoxy and then planed it all smooth. That looks pretty good. Uh, the only problem with the epoxy is you have to make sure that all your grooves are exactly the same width. Um, otherwise, it shows up really blatantly ugly um, because your, your lines get wider and thinner and wider and thinner. Um, so you have to be very careful with that. But yeah, that is a, a fun thing to do. Um, but I, I just like, the, I like the, the simplicity of wood speaking for itself. Uh, so I'm not a huge fan of staining and coloring. But it has its place. There are some times that are, it's, it's definitely worth it. What else we got? That's about it. Yeah, they're saying Q and well, there, there have been a couple requests. So if anyone has any questions right now, we got about ten minutes left. Otherwise, I'll wrap this up and we'll go home early. It's a long <laughs> ride for us. Yeah. yeah. Can you make a video on the building, please? Make a video on the building. Can you take a video on the building, please? I'm not. Don't sure. know what you're talking about. John, please clarify. <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping. Um, How about where's a cool place to meet up in Birmingham, England? Yes. Um, yeah. Well, not area. in Birmingham, but we'll, well, it'll have to be close to the convention center because we don't have a car. Of course, I guess we could Uber somewhere, but um, yeah. Or London, like. Yeah, we'll be in we'll London have for a couple a few days. Where it's just us, yay! <laughs> um, I was just about to say something. I remember what it was. Okay. Oh well. Well, I think we will. Will there be a video or shots of the box in place with the flowers Sarah suggests? Uh, maybe. Um, it will probably be a little while until I hang it up, but I will probably do like a. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely put it out on Instagram or something of that nature. Flower I don't know if I'll have an actual on video. The building. On this. Yeah, or for okay. mounting to the building. That was one thing I talked about. The the easiest way, I mean, there's a bunch of different ways you can get brackets and things like that. The easiest way is put this in the building and put screws through the back of this into the building. I know, screws, <gasps> but they work really well. <laughs> it's been here for and then when you're done, you can take them out. Um, and so that's, that is the way I've hung up flower boxes in the past, and it works really well. Um, so yeah, just put them through at an angle, and you're done. Just use uh, decking screws so they don't uh, they don't wear out as easily. Okay. Any you asked for questions. Now you're getting questions. Oh, so okay. You just well, we'll answer up. a few more questions here. Then. Um, let's see. D. Jiller, who started you in woodworking? His father started him in woodworking. Uh, let's see. Carbonite Gamorian asks, "How often should I be stropping my carving knife while in use?" Usually about every five to ten minutes. Um, I, I, I strop and strop them probably more than I need to, but I'd rather keep them perfectly honed than let them get dull. Um, so if you have a question, strop it. <laughs> Hang on. That's, that's what I'm often telling my son. Hey, JJ, strop it. <laughs> she 
she shakes her head at me. She and married me. Drop, drop, and roll. Ooh, that's a good one. I know. Um, let's see. How as Richie wants to know how much blood have you spilled in your woodworking journey, and what's been your worst injury? <laughs> I know which one um, I would pick. Uh, I really haven't had any bad injury. I think the the worst one was about three years ago. I dropped a chisel off the bench, and I saw the chisel going down, and I went down to catch it. Um, but my hand went down faster than the chisel, and the chisel actually caught me here. Oh, and I have yeah. a gash about, eh, about an inch and a quarter wide right across the top of my thumb. Just missed the vein right there. And I've got a nice scar from it. Um, but I haven't really had anything bad. Well, I was thinking of the, I think it's, a, is it called an angle grinder? But that wasn't woodworking. Was oh, it? yeah, yeah. I was, um, I was doing construction, and we had the rails from an overhead garage door went down. Um, and they installed the garage door before they poured the concrete. And then they poured the concrete, they concreted the rails in. But the rails weren't set where they needed to be, so we needed to cut them free. So I got an angle grinder with a 12-inch disc to cut, off the, um, to cut off the rails flush with the concrete. And I was cutting along fine, and then it jumped. And the whole thing bounced back at me with this 12-inch disc and ran right into my kneecap, sliced through the skin down into the bone, and carved out a chunk. You can still feel a bit of a ridge there. Kind of and fun. did we go anywhere? No. no. Just throw some tape on it and keep working. <laughs> yeah, I really haven't had much of any issue. I mean, my dad... Now you've cursed him all. <laughs> my dad took a chunk of his finger with a router once. Um, he had a... Uh, uh, on the router table. Um, that's about the worst thing that I've been around. I had a guy in one of the shops that I was supervising who used the saw stop. His hand slipped and <laughs> right into the blade. Scratched his hand, but uh, the saw stopped. So that would have been nice. Otherwise, he would have had a cut right through the palm down his wrist. Not a happy time. <laughs> what else? Uh, let's see. Bounty and duct tape. That's about what he did. Yeah. Bounty and duct tape. Duct tape's anesthetic, right? Huh? The anesthetic? Is that what you just said? Yeah. Why would duct tape be an anesthetic? That'd be the band-aid. Joking. You know what? <laughs> Don't. <laughs> you should marry me. Why? I have no idea, but you married me. I don't know either some days. It's your fault. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. Does Hardy, you're going to have to talk to James about your MTCA question. He has a question that you need. MWTCA? Yeah, send me an but email. But with Quebec. So send an email to Woodfire, yeah. right? Um, otherwise, go look on handtoolfinder.com. I have a list of all of the tool collecting associations and a map of all the locations around the world. Um, wood tool, uh, uh, Hand handtoolfinder.com. All right, let's see, Matthew Anderson, um, where did it go? Where did the question go? Hickory for dovetail keepsake box. I have a project request for it, but I'm worried it'll be too difficult. Nothing is too difficult. Just take it step by step. Think about each individual step and give it the best shot you've got. Don't expect perfection, but dive into it. Um, yeah, any, any beginner can do a dovetail box. It's, it's not going to turn out pretty. It's not going to be perfect, but oh well. Hickory is, is a hard wood to work in that it is hard. Um, but that means that you're working slower in it. And so you tend to have less problems because it forces you to take smaller and smaller bites. You're frozen. So. Let oh, it go. Haha. <laughs> is this Sorry. one frozen? Nope, I no, had oh, to. it's the other one. I'll move that. What else we got? Let's see. Uh, Rod Markins wants to know if you can do a video on a draw knife use and sharpening and maybe different styles. I'm sure you have done a video on that. Um, I have a video on sharpening draw knives. Uh, at least I think I do. Pretty sure I do. I thought you did. Um, I don't. I, I only own. I have two draw knives that I use. And I've got three or four more down there that I'm waiting to restore. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm not as proficient with a draw knife and I'm kind of waiting on those until I get a, uh, 
um, a, a shaving horse. Um, but I need sp space for a shaving horse, so um, it's going to be a while down the road. But I might do, I might do another sharpening video on this sometime. We'll see. They're a fun tool. Enough time for one more question? Well, there's not one up here, so why don't we wrap it up? Because it's cool. 59 and actually like, do it in an hour. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I think that about does it. So, uh, yeah, come back next week, and we will be having more fun and getting into more issues. Oh, there was one more question. Alan wanted to know we're in the right by right, the Mrs. Right via versus Mrs. Right. Oh, um, yeah, we need to do that. My wife, my, my mother is now out of the country, so when she gets back, maybe. That would be Which fun. Would be after we get back from. Yes. So late May, they, we'll all be back. Yeah. Cool. I think that about does it. So if you do have any questions that I didn't get to, go ahead and throw them into my email. You can find a contact me form on my website, and I try and answer as many of those as I can. So I think that about does it for today. Until next time, have a wonderful day.